<laughs> oh, he got wrecked. What's going on guys, Nathan here bringing you a Team Fortress 2 video on the direct hit and that example right there where I just one shotted that soldier out of nowhere is a perfect example of how this weapon behaves when you're good with it. I am getting so many one shots with this weapon and it's just ridiculously good so um, really the reason why I'm doing this video is uh, I will actually you know just say out right away that uh, Jerma actually gave me the idea for this when he released a video on the direct hit. And he basically said it's really freaking good for sentries, and it's really good if you know what you're doing. So, you know, naturally, just like pretty much most of his subscribers, I felt like I wanted to play with a direct hit a little bit during TF2 because, you know, he did good with it in-game, so I wanted to do good with it in-game. So then I started recording, and I started getting this ridiculous gameplay, and it's just hilarious how good this thing is. All of those times that you get a rocket on somebody, it's just, like, you're doing so much more damage with this weapon, and it's like yeah you don't get much splash damage but when you but but when you're mostly getting direct hits on people anyway this weapon is just absolutely beast so there's a couple of things I like to address regarding the direct hit, and that is that uh, when you start off using it, you're going to suck terribly because you're going to be going for that splash damage. You have to play like three or four matches to even get your playstyle to be switched towards getting direct hits versus uh, that that splash damage. So definitely, you know, don't just expect to go in a match and start owning. You have to play with, with this thing for like um, a day or so before you even get a little bit good at it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I was lucky enough where I just started getting these kills out of nowhere. I mean, if a scout comes around the corner and you get a shot on him, he's dead. Like, just like that. You know, it. I think um, direct hits do between, like, 120 damage and, like, 130-ish. So, you're going to be killing that scout, and I've one-shotted so many spies. It's just ridiculous because spies move slower. You know, they're, like, average speed. And uh, you're able to one-shot them so easily since they move slowly. Plus, they're out of the open, and uh, it's ridiculous. So... Um, also, I would recommend that you have a medic um, because, well, obviously medics are awesome. So if they can heal you, then that's just good for you. Just like I did in this video, that's a lot of the reason why I didn't die most of the time was be was because I had a medic that was willing to heal me because he saw that I was a good soldier. So, the second thing I want to discuss is that this weapon is the bane of sentries. Like, Germo was totally correct when he said that this is the second best way to taking out a sentry other than stickies. You know, not even heavies can take out sentries faster than this weapon because it's just like, bam, bam, sentry dead. Like, I mean, even if there's an engineer still hammering it, hammering at it with his wrench, I bet it'll take, what, like four rockets because the, the rate of doing the damage is so much more than the rate of healing the sentry. So this thing is ridiculous for taking out sentries. You know, you can one-shot mini sentries, takes two shots for, for any level sentry other than a mini sentry, and then all other buildings. So this thing is amazing. It's like the bane of engineers. So definitely use it if the other team is engineer heavy. Another thing to be wary about while using this weapon is uh, rocket jumping. You can only get two rocket jumps off with this weapon versus the normal three with the default. This is because obviously uh, since the damage is heightened towards enemies, you know it's obviously going to be doing more damage to yourself as well. So that means that you should either use the gunboats or um, I would actually recommend the shotgun for close quarters because once again, if you're in close quarters and you're shooting at your feet, you're going to be doing a lot of damage. So yeah, I mean gunboats or shotgun either would work. Um, I like using the shotgun personally because I just like using a backup as my secondary so yeah Another tip I have, and uh, this should actually be pretty obvious, but, you know, since the rockets do go faster, you're going to end up aiming less farther away from the enemy than you normally would with the default, and, you know, this, I mean, you're going to have to change around your predictability a little bit, and usually you don't have to aim, like, so far right or left while the enemy is, like, walking around, and uh, I know this seems obvious once again, but, like, you really got to master that once again using that whole, like, you know, use it for a day before you be before you judge yourself on whether you're good with it or not and uh, I would definitely suggest lowering your mouse sensitivity I actually did this I think yesterday because I just felt like I was out of control and when I'm like half
having a lot of fun playing Team Fortress 2, and I had a ton of fun recording this gameplay. My hand and arm start to get, like, spasmatic because, you know, when I'm having a lot of fun, that means there's some adrenaline in my system, and that means that, you know, I'm going to be a lot more shaky, less precise. So, therefore, you know, I lower my mouse sensitivity to counterbalance that. And, you know, that's a general tip for any first-person shooter or third-person shooter, but especially when you're just going for precision, which is what you have to do with this direct hit. So, uh, yeah, you know, pro tip. Also, this weapon is very good against heavies. What you can do is you can just pop in and out of a corner, you know, firing at a heavy, and heavies are typically really slow, so you can get a lot of direct hits on them. And actually, watch, oh my gosh, I got destroyed by that scout using the stupid-ass soda popper. But yeah, it's really good for heavies being they're really slow, so you can get direct hits on them, and you can typically use corners to your advantage. And, uh, yeah, so actually, I'm gonna fast-forward through the gameplay a little bit, and here is a clip that I thought was freaking hilarious. I trolled this heavy hardcore, so uh, here you go. Yes! That was so troll! Oh, that was so troll! So obviously, I was really excited to get that kill. I thought it was just hilarious how I freaking hit in the corner. He didn't even check to his left, and then I kill him with the equalizer, destroy their teleporter, and continue on my day. So that was freaking funny to me at the time, and I still think it's hilarious because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he was a new player or just new at the game or not. I don't, he could be a freaking pro player for all I know and just didn't check his corner, but I thought that was freaking hilarious. So yeah, guys, you really gotta try out this weapon. Give it a shot. It is very good if you know how to use it. And I don't know, my, my skills must have returned from nowhere after taking a break from Team Fortress 2. So I'm definitely enjoying it more today and or in the present tense. So uh, yeah, that will wrap up this video, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did enjoy recording it. And I think at the end, I checked the scoreboard and I think I got like 55 and 25-ish, something like that so yeah i don't know i did really good in like the previous three rounds that that's all i used was a direct hit soldier and i got that score so that's awesome anyways guys if you enjoyed the video please leave a rating i always appreciate it and if you like tf2 feel free to subscribe because i will bring lots of tf2 to my channel and i have in the past so there's that and uh yeah we do end up winning this round so thank you all for watching and hopefully i'll see you in the next video peace out